Hi there, I'm Bob for Century Auto Air, Tubes and Hoses of Tucson. So I get a lot of questions about the different things that we do here. Uh, to date, most of our videos have been resealing auto AC compressors and have been totally AC oriented, but we also do other things here. I remanufacture AC hoses, build brake lines, tubing, um, weld aluminum, a lot of different processes like that, and people are very curious when they come into my shop and ask me how we do this. So I thought maybe some other people might be interested in as well. So today I'm going to talk about aluminum welding. A lot of the things we do are tubes and welding AC barbs onto them, uh, installing service ports, repairing holes, and most people equate aluminum welding with TIG welding. And I have TIG welded aluminum, but I don't find it very efficient for the type of work we do. So for the last 20 years, I've been gas welding aluminum. Uh, and I'm going to spend some time today showing the materials I use to do that and then we'll go over to the welding station and I'll do a quick demonstration of it. So uh, let me show you some of the product. Okay so here's my favorite product for welding aluminum. This is DC reverse polarity arc welding rod. It is uh, would be used on your old school uh, arc welding machines and it has a flux covering on it, just like most uh, steel arc welding rod would have. And it lends itself really well to gas welding. Uh, especially older tubing that could be a little bit dirty, much like this. This is the air conditioning tubing and it's, you know, it's been, had fluids run through it. And it's, it's essentially dirty, it's porous. But the flux really helps clean the weld and, and, and break the oxidation and, and keep you from oxidizing the aluminum as you heat it. So it's really worked out well for me. And my setup is I use propane instead of acetylene. Acetylene used to work really well, um, but sometimes in the process of, of distilling the acetylene, it's not particularly clean and you can get bottles of it that um, are pretty sooty and, and makes it more difficult to weld aluminum. So I switched to propane and oxygen. I use a standard barbecue propane bottle hooked right to my uh, acetylene regulator and I just bump up the pressure a little bit and it, it's worked out very well for me. So uh, this product is by, it's a luminator and I buy it actually through my regular welding supply store. However, I found that other welding supply stores will have generic brands of it or, or their own uh, house brand or whichever brands they carry. Um, I used a 332nd size and it, it does take practice to get used to. It's not super simple and you may not get it the very first time you try, but with a little practice, it's amazing how clean the welds can get. Um, a couple tips to it. It does require quite a bit of cleaning. Uh, I use aluminum oxide sandpaper to break off the initial oxidation layer off the items that I am going to weld. Do not use anything steel based like wire wheels, um, wire brushes. They contain carbon in the steel and that impregnates into the aluminum and makes it more difficult to weld. So aluminum oxide sandpaper, all surfaces that you're going to weld. Next thing is very even heating, keeping the heat moving as quickly as you can so that you don't burn holes. There's no second chances with aluminum. Uh, a hole basically means it's going to disintegrate that whole section of tubing. So let's go over to the welding station. I'll do a demonstration of how I weld and uh, then we'll talk about it a little bit after that. So we're going to go ahead and weld this aluminum uh, AC hose barb to a number 12 pipe. We have sanded the pipes. There's a good tight fit on these to conduct uh, thermally, so that will assist us in the welding in that. We don't have to preheat one section more than the other, although a lot of times if the tube is thick you'll have to concentrate a little more heat on that area until it's ready to weld. Uh, we have our welding rod, regular brazen glasses. Go ahead and light our torch and pull this up. So our flame pattern, I've lit it, and we're going to add in our oxygen to a very neutral flame. Notice there's not a large uh, orange cone. It's uh, not 
real hot. The torch has a little bit of a hiss to it. It's not a tight flame, tight cone like that. That's too hot. But yeah, again, it's not real soft either. It really is a matter of getting the feel for the product. Everybody's gonna do it just a little differently. So we begin heating our metals. I wanna bring them both up to temperature. Keep in mind, they are still two separate pieces and we'll conduct heat a little differently. Also notice I never stop moving the torch. If you stop moving a torch, you'll burn a hole very rapidly. I think of it as working in circles. I work from side to side and we are just bringing the metal up to temperature right now. Then we slowly add in a little bit of rod. I actually physically lay the rod into the workpiece. And as the metal comes up to temp, it'll actually melt the flux off the rod onto the metal. That's when you know you're getting very close to being ready. Add in a little bit more and work around it. Next step, as it comes up to temperature, I'm gonna lay the rod on the workpiece so it conducts heat from the workpiece to the rod to help melt the rod. And you'll see it begin to melt. And you give it a little bit of a flick to flow it in. And you quickly work around. There is not time to, uh, to waste on this process. I'm gonna come in front of the camera here. Sorry, real quick. And once we've gotten the rod in there, we can build it up if we choose. The whole process happens really quickly. I'm gonna get a little bit of a flow to it, and that's it. As soon as you think you've got it, you step back and you get out. The less you do, the better. And we let that slowly cool off. You'll see the metal go dull and you're done. Next step is we'll very gently cool this in water and let it soak because the water will uh, uh, loosen up that flux. And then we'll clean up the weld and we'll give you a look at it. So here is a, our final weld. You can see it's very smooth and has flowed out, much like a solder, but it's not. It is a, a, a real weld. It's gas proof. There's no pinholes. Um, very attractive looking weld if you're trying to not draw attention to it. It can be polished with simply with seal wool uh, very easily. In fact, it's pretty cool. that little bit and starts to take on a shine. You can uh, actually take it further, sand it down, steel wool, buff it, polishing compound. Look almost like uh, chrome or just very polished aluminum. So here's another example of things we can do with uh, this type of welding aluminum. I've taken a hacksaw and cut into this tube to mimic, say, damage to the tube. A lot of times components under the hood of a car will rub on the tubing and create holes. I've gone ahead and I've taken my aluminum oxide sandpaper and broke off the uh, oxidation level layer on the outside. And now we're going to go ahead and uh, weld it. Start by lighting our torch, and once again, very neutral flame. And we want to bring our metal up to temperature. Never stop moving the torch. Bad things happen when that torch stops. Sometimes bad things happen when the torch is still moving. We won't talk about that right now. Okay, as you feel it start coming up to temp, you lay the rod on the metal. Let a little of the flux come off, and that's how we're going to start reading what we're doing here. And we'll know if we're getting close or not. And we are. You can see the flux becomes liquid. When we lay the rod in there, let the torch heat heat it as well as the metal. Let a little break off. And we go to the next hole, a little flux. Keep the rod and the metal, same time, let it flow in. 
and our last one. And you can go back and touch them up. But really, once you get it, it's best just to get out and not play with it because that's when the bad things happen and the metal disappears on you. Really a very simple way to do it. And next we'll go ahead and cool it. But you can see that we have filled those spots and it actually flows down into the cracks. And that can be polished out, sanded flat, and you'd never know that that repair happened. So I'm gonna go cool the metal now. And there's our final repair on that. It's been washed off the flux, or washed the flux off. There. And there's our final repair. You can see that it's filled in the slots. Relatively smooth. Once again, that can be filed and polished. Or if it's not in a visible area under the hood, just leave it just like that. So now that you've seen how we've welded the barb, uh, an air conditioning barb on tubing, here's a couple of other types of things that you can do. Uh, I weld these end nuts when I make an air conditioning fitting up from scratch. And you can see, once again, very smooth weld, leak-free joint. Um, we can weld service ports into tubing, say we want to add a binary switch or something to an aluminum tube. And you can do that with this product. It's actually, once you get it, it's a lot of fun to do. Um, TIG welding is still superior for any large piece, say uh, some sort of motorcycle case or heavy aluminum. Uh, you're just not gonna get enough heating with a torch um, to, to get a quality weld. Aluminum's a heat sink and it's gonna just constantly pull the heat away. So I've ne I have not had good luck doing larger pieces unless I TIG weld them. But for smaller pieces, this works well. This is not the same rod as you would see online where they're welding beer cans together and, thing, and, and doing miracle work. Um, there, there's no easy way to do aluminum. It just takes practice and kind of knowing what's the best product to use for what you're doing. Um, but it is very rewarding once you do do it. So I hope you found this video interesting or helpful. I hope it's answered some questions as to different ways to weld aluminum. Uh, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. It helps me gauge whether these videos are of interest to you. As well in the comment section, if you want to post whether you would like to see videos about other welding processes such as silver soldering and brass uh, flux coated brazing, uh, also tube bending and tube flaring, uh, it'll help me determine what next video to make. You can find us on the web at centuryautoair.com and autohosesolutions.com. Thank you.